Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out and supporting Margaret. Uh, I'm Ken, one of her brothers. Uh, thank you for coming to the family farm. Uh, we're so proud of Margaret's accomplishments and what she's headed here for. And my last one line, win, lose, or draw, or recount, we're behind her. <laughs> I'm Joan Grow, and I really want to thank all of you for joining us in this very, very special place. And Elaine, thanks, thanks for having us uh, and for allowing us to be your guests on what is a perfectly gorgeous day. I think it's a wonderful omen for the beginning of a campaign. Now, I know that there are a lot of you here who have known Margaret since she was a little girl, probably playing in the fields along this river valley. Well, I've known Margaret for years as a mom, an activist, and a leader in our community and state. And when I think about what the next governor of this state should be, I believe what Minnesota needs is experience and they need leadership. Now, I served in both the legislative and the executive branches of government. I firmly believe that a governor has to not only understand how the process works, but has to demonstrate that they can manage and work with the legislature, and that's not an easy task. I have seen far too many chief executives who had brilliant, wonderful ideas, but they couldn't get along well enough with folks to get those ideas passed. Margaret knows how to do that. I'm supporting Margaret because I know no one will work harder for the people of Minnesota. I have watched her confront the problems that other people avoid. She believes, as we all do, in a government that's open and transparent, and she has a strong sense of what is right and wrong. And then perhaps most importantly for me, I want a governor who understands the problems we face has ideas about how to solve them, has the vision for the future of our state, and the passion to get the job done. That's our next governor of Minnesota, Margaret Anderson Kelleher. Well, thank you everyone for coming out today and thank you Joan thank you for being a mentor and a friend and for your tremendous years of public service to Minnesota thank you to all the current and previously elected officials who've joined us here today there are a lot of them out here so thank you for coming out and thank you to my teachers 4-H leaders family, and friends who have joined us here today. Thank you for being here. I want to especially thank my husband and my best friend David and our kids, Patrick and Franny, for being here with me and joining me on the journey. I grew up right here on this farm. I come from a family of farmers, teachers, inventors, carpenters, quarry workers, millers, nurses, truck drivers, and business owners. I am the youngest of six children, and I am so very fortunate that my mom, Elaine, and my brothers Craig, Bruce, Ken, and Paul, who will join us a little bit later, and my sister Martha from Cheyenne, Wyoming, and their families are able to join us today. On this farm, 
We worked together and we played together. It was a great place to grow up. We hunted and we fished and we built something that we still call home to this day. Our dad, Carl, was a stoic guy, but he was loving. And each night before bed, he would reach out his hand to me, shake mine, and say goodnight, kid. <laughs> so one evening after supper, when he pushed his plate away, put his head down on the table, and started to cry, I knew something was really, really wrong. I asked my mom a little later what was happening that night. She did not tell me not to worry. She did not tell me everything was going to be okay. She told me the truth. And she explained what was going on. Interest rates had skyrocketed. Commodity prices had dropped. Milk prices had bottomed out a lot like today. Mom said we were in real danger of losing our farm, our life, our livelihood. But our parents did everything they could do. They cashed in their life insurance, their life savings, their retirements, and they were able to go on to save this farm from foreclosure. My family faced difficult times, but we were determined to face that crisis and succeed. Those difficult days shaped the person I am today. And in these difficult days, when Minnesotans worry about losing their jobs, too many worry about losing their homes, so many Minnesotans worry about paying the bills for groceries and energy, and they most certainly worry, can we afford to go to the doctor? I know that Minnesotans are also determined to prosper again. As I travel the state, people have been telling me their hopes and dreams for their own families and their hopes and dreams for Minnesota. Minnesotans are hungry for a leader right now who not only understands the challenges that they face, but is also looking for the leader who's willing to face the problems with them and get the problems solved. People are tired of Band-Aid fixes that hurt more than they heal. Minnesotans want leaders who don't just listen to a few, but who listen to everyone. And that is exactly why I am running for governor. I am the person who listens. I am the person who sits down with others and works to get the job done. I'm a person who makes certain that we have a long-term plan in place for success. And in Minnesota, we don't face our challenges alone. When the safety of our roads and bridges was at stake and Governor Pawlenty vetoed the transportation bill that would have fixed our problems, I built a coalition. I built a coalition of business leaders and labor, a coalition of environmentalists and farmers, a coalition of Republicans and Democrats. And we successfully override road Governor Pawlenty. And in Minnesota, we, don't, we look to the future together. We saw an opportunity to take the lead in a clean energy future. And the jobs and whole new industries that it will bring here to Minnesota. So I built a coalition, a coalition of conservationists and utilities, a coalition of Democrats and Republicans. Now Minnesota has one of the strongest 
renewable energy standards in the country where Minnesota utilities must produce more clean energy than anywhere else in the country and that will help make Minnesota the center